What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with the review for Love After Lockup, Season 3, Episode 15, I believe this is, titled Cuffing Season, you guys. This episode wasn't a whole lot, but it was okay for me. Let's get into this episode, you guys. All right, guys, I want to start this episode up with Sean and Destiny. So you guys remember in the last episode, Destiny went out with her sister to go to, you know, the casinos, go drinking, go do whatever the hell she wants to do. And you guys also remember, Sean was worried because the next day is her court appearance and he's worried if Destiny is going to show up and if he's going to be out $50,000, which I was hoping he would be. So, you know, he um, says that Destiny didn't stay with him. He's been calling Destiny, but no response from Destiny. And, you know, he also tries to call her right then and there, but she ignores his phone call. So, like I said, he's at the courthouse. He's wondering, pacing, and just worried about the fact if Destiny's coming. No, he really was worried about that money, which would have served him right, because now he's wondering, well, was everyone right when they said Destiny, you know, was just using me and she's not going to come through? Yeah, I mean, you fool. You shouldn't have put yourself in that position in the first fucking place. Like I said, you get what you deserve. I mean, you got six kids, and your kids come second to this woman. Okay. And they were supposed to be at court by 8.30, so, you know, she got, she has to be there. So, like I said, he's still pacing, and it's three minutes till 8.30. She does eventually show up with her sister, having three minutes left. I'm like, damn. Y'all could have real close, huh? Make the man sweat, which I'm cool with that. Like I said, my problem with that is he got six fucking kids. Like, you got six goddamn kids, and you put your kids on a back burner for this woman. That is ridiculous. And then they are going to be on life after lockup, and he's going to ask her to marry him because he feels like, you know, with her showing up, that shows that she's changed. No, it does not show that she's changed. It just shows that she's a lot smarter than what you are. But it doesn't show that she's changed. God, that man is so stupid. Speaking of Life After Lockup, we got some new couples added to Life After Lockup. I, you guys remember I told you a few weeks ago that they are adding some people from this show this season. Um, they're adding Chevelle and Quaylon, Quaylin. They're adding um, Sean and Destiny. They are adding, um, who else are they adding? Who else did I see in that, tra in that little trailer that's from this season? Oh, um, Lindsay and Scott. And then they're bringing us a blast from the past from season two with Amber and Puppy. I'm like, wait a minute, where the fuck did Amber come from? I mean, we all knew she was a lesbian, but okay. That's gonna be interesting to see. And Puppy's calling that, that cr what was her, Amber and um, what was his name? Damn, I forgot what that boy's name was. The one that, I mean, he just gave you the creeps. What was his name? Don't remember. But he the one that adopted the puppy. But they're back. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Christiana and John. You know, I really could do without this couple. And it's not even Christiana. Like I said in last week's review, it's not Christiana that I had the issue with. It's John that I have the issue with. John is selfish. John is all about himself. You know, he pretends to care about Christiana, but it's really just about him. So, like I, like I said in last week's review, he was moving in her sister and her mom. Now, the mom, I can understand. I mean, I was thinking to myself in last week's review, like, they don't have any family that she can go and stay with, like an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a sister, a brother, or anything like that. But okay, they're coming to stay with him. Now, like, now, like I said last week's episode review, that sister would have been on her own. Like, you a fully grown-ass woman, get a job and get on your own, but whatever. So Tammy and Tara are there. So John got a, got a phone call from the halfway house saying that Christiana has left the halfway house. And I think they said that she has 30 days to get her back or something like that. So John now wants to take it upon himself to go look for Christiana. He wants to go to the place that Christiana hangs out at. And he wants Tara to come with him. I'm like, are you serious? This woman has a drug, a, a drug addiction and you're asking her to come with you to where her sister hangs out at who has relapsed. 
like again, like I said, it's all about John. John doesn't think about anybody but himself. Like that is just terrible. <sighs> Selfish ass person, if you ask me. So then we do see the con artist, John. He's going to find Christiana. So um, I guess she told him a place that she hangs out at or either the sister probably did. Somebody told him a place that she hangs out at. So he's going there and you know he's texting her, he's calling her and she's not responding. But then we do see Christiana come out of the shadows and you know she gets in the truck with him. And again, like I said, very selfish of him. So, you know, instead of him taking her back to the halfway house, he's talking about taking her somewhere where she can't be extradited. I'm like, are you fucking serious? This woman escaped from a halfway house. She is not a free woman. She needs to go back to the halfway house in order to finish her stint so that way she can get out of the halfway house and possibly go get some fucking help. But no, this selfish con artist is thinking about himself. Per usual. Yeah, life after lockup don't ever bring... I mean, if Christiana finds another man, cool. Y'all can bring them on, but hub with John, it's an absolute hell the fuck no. And let's move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's discuss Heather and Dylan. Now, with this one, it ain't gonna be long. I can tell you that with Heather and Dylan. So, you guys, remember in last week's episode, well, what's her aunt's name? Aunt Diane. She called uh, Dylan to tell him that his PO was there. And you guys remember Heather. Heather is batshit motherfucking crazy. It's just something wrong with that chick. Like I said in last week's episode, reviewed that Dylan needs to run for the hills. But I do know that Heather and Dylan are not together anymore. I know that, you know, they both say that there is domestic abuse on both sides. I can see it. I wouldn't, and I'm not surprised if it is. So, you know, they make it back to Aunt Diane's house, and he's talking to his probation officer. Dylan was lucky that his probation officer went so easy on him because, I mean, if you're supposed to go from the prison to your um, your reporting, you know, wherever you're supposed to report to, be at a halfway house or someone's residence, and you're supposed to report there, you're supposed to call them and let them know that you've made it, like, and you didn't do that, that man could have arrested you, but the man was being lenient and he didn't arrest you. And this is, once again, another reason why I say you might want to let the fuck, go, you might want to let Heather the fuck go because, I mean... You just got out of jail and you could potentially went right back, not even an out, not even a few hours out of, not even 24 hours out of prison, and she's already put you in a position where you can go back to jail. Yeah, Dylan, run for the hills. So, you know, at this point, she doesn't want to leave because she's so fearful, so they're going to stay there. She doesn't want to go anywhere, and then she is straddling him. I'm like, yo, aunt is still in the room, and we can hear you talking about baby this. I'm like, Heather. There's something wrong with Heather, and I'm moving on because that's all I got to say about Heather is just something wrong with the chick. All right, you guys, so let's talk about Lindsay and Scott. So, Lindsay, you guys remember last week's episode, Lindsay and Scott got into it about this alleged excerpt from a book that she, um, you know, she wrote a quote from. Now, here's the thing. If that were, in fact, true, Lindsay, you don't know the name of the book? Okay, I granted, granted you might not know the name of the book. You can't Google it. Like you can put, I mean, if you if it's a book, you can get on a Google, you can do a Google search and find the exact book. You can just type in a few lines of it and you can find it. You can ask Siri, you know. There's a lot of things you could do, but you're not doing it. So I'm more inclined to believe that that is your master plan and you know, once you finally saw what Scott, once you finally saw Scott and this house, you were like, oh, fuck, my plan is fucked. So, like I said, they're still upset with each other about that. So she's calling, you know, to try to get her um, her, her um, halfway home situation switched to another address. And they were like, do you have one? She says, yes, my mom's. So then she calls her mom, tells her mom what's going on. And her mom's like, yeah. You can come stay here. So then she calls the parole board back and she asked them, like, how long will this take? They said, well, everybody's gone for the weekend and it won't be until next weekend. She's like, fuck, so I'm stuck here. So then, you know, she t <laughs> when she told Scott the fact that he doesn't have enough money for her, I was like, well, damn. 
That's fucked up. Even though I don't think she's lying, but that was a fucked up thing to say. So, you know, and again, this couple's going to be on Life After Lockup as well. So these two, like I said, they're still going at it with each other. And, you know, she's... Now, this part I didn't understand with her about the fact that her daughter's room is not finished when Scott had plenty of time to finish his room. I mean, she didn't get out when she was supposed to get out. So Scott has no excuse for why that room wasn't completed. But, you know, it is what it is. They, well, as far as we know, they're still together. Let's move on, you guys, to the last two couples that I want to discuss. <laughs> when the next one is a doozy. All right, you guys, let us discuss Shonda and Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese is stupid. Like, dude, you talking about the fact, now, in, when we came back from the hiatus, he said he hadn't talked to her in two months after she got out of, out of jail. Now he's saying he hasn't talked to her in three months, but he's still calling her. And when the phone a phone call came, he's like, that might be her. Now that's a fucking scam. <laughs> Hell, she was a scam. Like, she was a fucking scam. And I'm just like, after three months, dude, like your daughter told you, she ghosted you. Like, she she got on that bus. She ghosted you. She, wanted, she had no intentions of talking to you. And then the producers put on the screen that, uh, you know, the producer tried to reach out to her and they were unable to reach out to her. But she finally did come in for one of those postseason interviews and she's talking to the production team and she's telling the production that, you know, she's clean. You know, she has a job and she has a vehicle. And, you know, <laughs> I knew what it was when it happened. You could see her face in that episode when she first laid eyes on Tyrese with that big tacky blue ass suit that was ill-fitted with them ugly ass gator shoes that did not match whatsoever all that nigga needed was a cane for a pimp cane and a hat but again that suit was just ill-fitted number one that suit threw her turned her off and then she said the fact that when they kissed she didn't feel anything for him i'm like girl we knew that from the beginning we could see that we could see that the public could see that i don't know how tyrese Tyrese saw it. I think Tyrese just was, I don't know, man. I, I, wanna, I don't want to say the man was desperate, but hell, I feel like he was desperate. Talking about, you know, he can go to the, he, he, he looks good. He can go to the grocery store and pick up a woman. He can go here and car wash and pick up a woman. If you can do that, why the fuck did you pick up an ex-con? Make that shit make sense to me. So then the producer was, you know, she also said she changed her number. Because he called her and texted her so much and left voicemails that she changed her number. Now, I'm not laughing. Well, it is funny to me. But I don't have any more respect for her than I do for him. Because he's... His, that was his... So when he was talking about he can pick up any woman at a car wash or wherever, that was his ego talking because he felt played. That was that man's ego talking. Now, with her... I don't feel nothing for her because I think she was fucked up for what she did. <laughs> now, granted, I, I, wouldn't, I, I definitely wouldn't have done the same thing. I really would not have done that. And you took that man's money and left. I would have told him right then and there when I saw him with that suit on. I'm like, bruh, you in this suit. And I would have, been, I would have to have been brutally honest with him. I'm like, bruh, this suit is killing me. Like, what the fuck you got on? What the hell is this? What the hell? You look like a fucking pimp. Like, I would have told him no, in no uncertain terms, like, dude, you look like a fucking pimp. And it's, like, this is turning me the hell off. Like, if you were trying to turn me on, you could have, I mean, you could have at least just wore some some, some jeans and a shirt. Hell, you could have wore some sweats and a shirt or some gym shorts and a shirt. I don't give a fuck what you wore. But this, this, it ain't it. So yeah, she could, and she called him apologized. I'm talking about she hopes they can be friends. What? You ghosted this man. You think he wants to be friends with you? Like I was here for him when he said fuck her. Like fuck off. I don't give a fuck about you. Like you disappeared for three months. Well, technically she didn't disappear. Well, technically she did. But I mean, you ghosted him. What do you expect this man to say? All oh, is forgiven. I'm cool. Let's be friends. No. And then the producers asked her, did she cut off, um, you know, some of the other guys that she was talking to? She coyly answered that question. She was coyly answering that question. 
because it led you to believe that yeah she she said she's she said i think she said she cut some of the guys off but i think she's talking to somebody i don't care we ain't got to talk about hopefully we ain't got to talk about them no more let's move on all right you guys and then last let's talk about jessica and maurice it wasn't a lot with these two either um they're going over to her parents house and jessica tells you know maurice hey don't tell my parents that we're pregnant so maurice is going to hang out with her dad he's going to teach him you know a little bit about welding and you know she's going to go shopping with her mother so you know maurice and her dad they go and do some welding i thought that was actually a really sweet moment I did, I did like that for Maurice. You know, Maurice is talking about how his father didn't do anything for him. And I, I did enjoy that. You know, and I remember in the beginning of the season, I was questioning her parents about, you know, if it might have been a race thing. I don't think it is anymore. Looking at the family, I think that they are, are genuine people. I hope they are. So, you know, um, while they're doing this welding, Maurice let us, he didn't let it slip. Maurice just flat out told that he and Jessica are pregnant. And the dad has mixed reactions to this. And I understand why the dad has mixed reactions to this. I don't think it has anything to do with Maurice. Like I said a few minutes ago, I don't think it has anything to do with Maurice being black and her being white. I think the issue is you just got out of prison. You don't have a job yet, but y'all having a baby. Like, I felt like the dad was happy, but apprehensive at the same time because the dad said you know i raised my kids i'm not raising anymore and i think that's what the issue is the fact that one you just got out of prison two you ain't got no fucking job and three y'all having a fucking baby the fuck so then um where where where, where, where am i going with this oh maurice so maurice was talking about the fact that um you know he and Jessica got married in prison. It was, you want to marry him? You want to marry her? Boom, y'all married. And he wants to do things right this time. He wants to get her a ring. He wants to propose to her. He wants to have an actual wedding. And I'm here for that. And the dad gives him $1,000 to go buy her a ring. I'm like, wow, that was big. I don't know if I would have did it. But the dad said it was a test to see what Maurice is going to do with the money. I mean, any other nigga, they would take the $1,000 and <laughs> say, fuck this ring. But I do hope that Maurice is not that type of nigga to do that. But, yeah, you guys, that was Love After Lockup. Um, Life After Lockup returns on November 20th. So that's coming up really soon. But, you guys, that was the uh, episode. Let me know what you guys think about the show, the episode. We will discuss it in the comment section below. Um, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video and until the next one, you guys stay safe. Take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Real Housewives of Potomac. And we got some shit to address in the first few minutes of the Real Housewives of Potomac review. Bye, guys.